In this video, I'm going to show you how to graph public functions. So this paragraph here really kind of summarizes the whole thing. Polar functions generally have input theta and output r. That's going to be really important for us. Okay, We're used to a world where it's like rectangular, where y is the output and x is the input. And so we say y equals f of x. Now in the polar world, if we're saying the input is theta and the output is r, it's going to be r equals some function of theta that we're graphing. And this means that when we go to sketch the graphs, which is something we actually don't need to do very much in AP Precal, we'll be rotating counterclockwise from the positive x-axis, at least mentally, you know, just like the unit circle, and changing how far the curve is from the origin as we rotate. Let me show you what I mean. Okay, so suppose I'm just graphing a function f of theta on theta equals 0 to theta equals pi over 2. And maybe that function is decreasing, right? So that means r, the distance from the origin, would be decreasing as I increase theta from 0 to 2 pi. And so, you know, we might have a curve that looked like that. Okay, now these polar curves, they're going to be kind of interesting. Uh, and they're going to look unlike graphs that we're familiar with. So the first one I want to have a sketch is r equals 2 theta divided by pi. Um, I could have also written this 2 over theta times pi. So this is like a linear equation. r equals some number of thetas with a slope. And I think, you know, since we're just first starting off, just like when we're first starting off graphing anything new, we should probably make a table, plot points, and connect the dots. So I'm going to bring in a two-column table. And since theta is the input variable and r is the output variable, I'm going to label the columns like that. And I'm just going to suggest if we're going 0 to 2 pi, let's just think about the big stops on the unit circle. Let's think about 0 pi over 2 pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. Okay, so when we plug in theta equals 0, r will equal 2 over pi times 0, which would be 0. And then if I plugged in pi over 2, when I doubled that, I'd get pi, and then I'd divide by pi, and that would be 1. And then if I plugged in pi, I'd have 2 pi over 2, and that's 2. And okay, now I see the pattern. It's going to be 3 and 4. So I can go over here and start to think about sketching a graph. Okay, the first point I want to plot is theta equals 0, r equals 0. But that's not going to give me a whole lot of information because r equals 0 is just at the origin. Okay, then the next place would be theta equals pi over 2, r equals 1. Now I'm thinking about going one unit away from the origin along what I know to be theta equals pi over 2. So straight up one unit. And then next I'll have theta equals pi. And I'll be going two units to the left because theta equals pi is the far left edge of the unit circle. So towards theta equals pi, two units away, and it might be about there. If theta equals 3 pi over 2, three units away towards the bottom of the unit circle, it would be about like that. And then when I plug in 2 pi, I should be four units away from the origin. And okay. So the f more I rotate, the farther I go away from the origin. And I think you can visualize that. The farther I rotate, the more distant I get. That's going to be an outward spiral. And, you know, the fact that the graph looks the way it does in the first quadrant, where it's like starting off really kind of sideways and, and occupying graph up there, not just going straight, um, I think that's what we'll be talking about more as we graph more of these curves in this video. Okay, so I might just describe this as a spiral and you move on. Now let's sketch a constant function. Sketch r equals 3 on the interval 0 to 2 pi. And I think that we can do this without making a table because, you know, the r column would just be all 3. So I'm just going to think about r always equaling 3. So at theta equals 0, 3 units away from the origin. Theta equals pi over 2, 3 units away from the origin. Theta equals pi, still 3 units away from the origin. And theta equals 3 pi over 2, Yet again, three units away from the origin. If I think about this, um, if it's always the same distance, that's going to make a circle centered at the origin. And so that would be the graph of r equals 3 on the interval 0 to 2 pi. But what if I wanted to graph this on a more limited domain? What if I only wanted to graph this on theta between pi over 4 and 5 pi over 6? Right suggest that we just think about where pi over 4 and 5 pi over 6 are and just restrict ourselves to looking inside of that, you know, kind of wedge and see, okay, well, it's going to be the same graph. It's going to be the same circle. It's just going to be only between those two blue lines. And so I'd say graph it about like that. And, you know, where this up here is still 
three units away from the origin, and all of those places are three units away from the origin. That's what that graph would look like. Now let's sketch a graph of theta equals something. So theta equals pi over three, and I would just suggest you not think too hard, but you know, you know where theta equals pi over three is. It's it's right there, um, and you know you might say, okay, that's the graph of theta equals pi over three. But I would suggest that that might not be all of it. That we could actually have the other half of this line, okay, if it, that did actually extend with the same angle down through the origin. That was my best drawing at it. Um, I'm realizing now looking at it, it might not be perfect, but that's okay. Um, and what I'm saying here is that on the dark blue part of the line, this is where r is positive, and in the light blue part of the line, that would be where r is negative. Okay, but together, uh, a graph of a theta equals some number, that's going to be a line that goes through the origin. Now let's look at a little bit more interesting polar functions. So something like the graph of r equals 1 minus sine theta. Well, we don't really know how to graph r equals 1 minus sine theta, but we definitely would know how to graph y equals 1 minus sine x. And so I'm just going to remind you what that would look like. Right? It's a sinusoidal function, so we bring out the box and just try to sketch one period of it. Okay, this is a negative sine, and sine is the one that starts in the middle and you know ends in the middle, but negative sine starts in the middle and goes down. Okay, and so I would fill in the graph like that and then think about, okay, well, the midline is the number that's added on the outside. That's a positive 1. And the amplitude, I've gotten just 1 multiplied by sine x, so it would be up by 1 and down by 1. And then horizontally speaking, it's just sine x. There's no multiplier, there's no dilation factor, there's no phase shift, so it would just be the standard 0 to 2 pi window. Okay, this means, um, what I'm telling you is, we can use this graph to help us produce the graph of the polar curve. And so this is going to be my sketch of the polar function r equals 1 minus sine theta. Starting where theta equals 0, I think I'm going to, yeah, I'll do that one here. And r is going to equal 1, okay? Along theta equals 0, 1 unit away from the origin. And then I'm also going to plot these other times when I'm one unit away from the origin in red because that's you know the most frequent outcome. So when theta equals pi, I'm one unit away from the origin. And then when theta equals 2 pi, I'm one unit away from the origin. It's like, wait a second, I already had a piece of graph there. And then the graph is going to repeat itself. So this thing must be like a closed loop of some kind. Now I might think about uh, the point in the middle, right? There were theta equals pi over 2. When theta equals pi over 2, r is going to equal 0, and r only equals 0 at the origin. Okay, so that's kind of weird. Uh, but then when theta equals 3 pi over 2, r is equal to 2, so I'm going to end up 2 units away from the origin along 3 pi over 2, and I'll be down there. And it's like, oh, what's going on here? Okay, but what we need to do is remember that on like the rectangular graph is showing us that the graph is at its minimum hitting an output of zero. Okay? Other than that one time, that blue dot, the output is always positive, which means r is always going to be positive on this polar graph. So I'm going to zoom in here, look pretty closely at this, and say, all right, well, r needs to be positive as theta runs from 0 to pi over 2, and that means I need to hit all of the angles. So really, I need to be coming in almost vertically towards that point right there. And then the same thing over here, I have to hit all of the angles between pi over 2 and pi. And then I'm going to go and just kind of start to connect the dots as smoothly as I can. And then I've got kind of the, the closed graph, okay? That is the full graph. And this thing kind of looks like a heart, and that's why it is called a cardioid. If we want to sketch the graph of r equals 2 cosine theta, I'm going to take the same approach. I'm going to sketch it rectangularly first, and then think about the polar curve. So the graph of y equals 2 cosine x, I'm going to start with the numbers here first. Okay, there's no vertical translation, so there's no, or the midline is y equals 0. Okay, or I guess uh, maybe I was thinking about sketching the graph of cosine first. Positive cosine starts at the top, ends at the top, 
uh, it's at the bottom in the middle, and then we just kind of fill out the rest of the graph. Then numerically, I'm starting at zero, yeah, adding one, or no, adding two and subtracting two. I'll change that in a second. Horizontally speaking, um, I've got the standard zero to two pi interval, because no phase shift and no change in period. So that being halfway is pi, and halfway to that is pi over two. But I'm only interested in graphing this function on the interval 0 to pi over 2. So I'm only going to give that portion of the graph. And you know, now I'll go ahead and change this to negative 2 to positive 2. And now I'm ready to sketch the polar graph. So first I'm going to think about when theta equals 0, r equals 2. Okay. So that's going to give me this point over here. And I'm going to say that's that's, you know, x equals 2 on the x-axis right there, two units away from the origin along theta equals 0. Then the other point I can see is theta equals pi over 2. And when theta equals pi over 2, r is going to equal 0, and r equals 0 is on the origin, no units away from the origin. Okay, so you can, you can see, OK, well, you can see the graph is going downhill. So you know that means that r is going to be decreasing, which makes sense because I'm going towards r equals 0. Um, but you don't really know the shape of the curve. I think in order to try to justify the shape of the curve, I'm going to think about where theta equals pi over 4. Okay, when theta equals pi over 4, r is going to equal 2 times the cosine of pi over 4. And we know the cosine of pi over 4 is square root of 2 over 2. So that's going to give me the square root of 2. Now, me personally, I know that the square root of 2 is between 1.4 and 1.5, because 14 squared is 196 and 15 squared is 225. Now that might be a little bit more arithmetic than you need for AP Precal. Um, I'm just trying to give you a reason to believe me on why the shape of this curve is what it is. Okay, so I'm going to think about where theta equals pi over 4. Uh, R is going to be, you know, like 1.5. Okay, so I'm going to think about, um, what was I thinking here? Uh, yes. If you went in and used the formula x equals r cosine theta, you would see that when theta equals pi over 4, x would need to equal 1. Okay, so that's going to be halfway in between up along that line theta equals pi over 4. And so what I'm saying is this is going to make a circle because the radius was... I don't know, it worked out just right. Um, and, you know, if you need more reason to believe me that this is a half circle, uh, you should go to Desmos and graph it on, on a limited window and graph it on 0 to pi and graph it on 0 to 2 pi, and you'll see that there's, there's some interesting stuff happening with this curve. Okay, but I think that's all I've got to say about this one. All right, let's look at r equals 2 cosine of 2 theta from 0 to pi over 4, kind of like speeding up the graph, so to speak. Um, I'm going to do the same thing, graph it rectangularly. Okay, think about the numbers first. Okay, no vertical shift, so midline is 0. Amplitude is 2 from the 2 on the outside, so I'm going up by 2 and down by 2. There's no phase shift because I'm not subtracting anything from theta or from x, so I'm going to start at 0, but I do have a horizontal dilation. I'm going to have a horizontal dilation by a factor of a half, so instead of going 0 to 2 pi, I'm going to go 0 to 1 pi, which would mean that halfway in the middle would be pi over 2, halfway in between 0 and pi over 2, that's pi over 4, that's a good sign, looking at the domain they want. And then halfway between pi over 2 and pi would be 3 quarters of pi. Okay, think about the graph of positive cosine, it would go there, but since I'm only interested in the graph between 0 and pi over 4, I'll just fill in that part. So when I go to sketch the graph in a polar world, I need to really restrict myself to only thinking about theta between 0 and pi over 4. So the graph has to be between these two gray arrows. So I'm starting at theta equals 0, r equals 2. I'm going to be two units away from the origin, wherever I think that is. It's going to be right there. I can even label that real quick. Okay, that's two units away. And then when theta goes to pi over 4, r equals 0. And as I go to sketch the graph between theta equals 0 and theta equals pi over 4, I cannot cross over that, that gray line, that theta equals pi over 4, because if I did, then that would be points where theta was greater than pi over 4, and theta's got to be less than or equal to pi over 4. So I know I'm going to have positive distances from the origin for all these points in the middle, 
but you know, pretty much if I'm going from that point to the other point, uh, it's going to have to look kind of like that. Okay, while not crossing the gray line. So this is going to be part of a larger curve. And if you're interested in what the whole curve looks like, pull out some technology, you know, go to Desmos, pull out a graphing calculator and put it in polar mode and, you know, go ahead and sketch it and see that this is part of a rose curve. Now we need to talk about something that we haven't thought about in quite a while, and that's average rate of change. And we looked at that at the beginning of this course, uh, but we need to be able to think about average rates of change of polar functions. So remember that the average rate of change is it's basically its rise over run. It's the change in the output divided by the change in the input over a given interval. So if our function is f of theta equals cosine theta and our interval is 0 to pi over 2 and we're asked to find the average rate of change of f on the interval 0 to pi over 2, it's going to be f of pi over 2 minus f of 0 divided by pi over 2 minus 0. And if f is cosine theta, that would be cosine of pi over 2 minus cosine of 0, all divided by pi over 2 minus 0. Now we know that cosine of pi over 2 is 0, and cosine of 0 is 1, so the numerator of the fraction would be negative 1, and the denominator would still be pi over 2. Now we could simplify this and say this is negative 2 over pi, uh, but I think what I want to really point out is that the numerator is negative and the denominator is positive, which means that this is a negative number. And that's why I said the function f of theta is decreasing on the interval 0 to pi over 2. And we just showed that by showing it has a negative average rate of change. Okay, but it asks, what does this say about the graph of r equals cosine theta on the interval 0 to pi over 2? Well, we just said that f of theta was decreasing and r is f of theta, so r is going to be decreasing. And I do recognize, in case you're you know, farther ahead in the course and looking back or, or something like that, I do recognize that there's more to it than what I'm talking about right here. But in this entire video, we've made sure that r is always positive. And I am assuming that if r is positive and it's decreasing, then we are moving closer to the origin. Okay. And in the next video, we'll talk about what to do when r goes negative. But we haven't even graphed that situation yet, so we don't need to think about that in terms of like graph moving toward or away from the origin. For today, when r is positive, if r is decreasing, the graph is moving towards the origin. And if r is increasing, the graph would be moving away from the origin. So if we're asked about a polynomial function in theta, you know, but a polar function, and we're asked about when is it moving toward or away from the origin, we're probably going to have to sketch the graph of that polynomial in the rectangular world and make our decisions based on if it's, you know, increasing or decreasing. So I'm going to graph y equals x squared minus 4x plus 5. And I'm noticing that that's not factorable, so I'm going to need to think about, oh, well, I mean, are there zeros of it? You know, like, what's even going on here? So let's think about the vertex. So the vertex, the x-coordinate is going to equal negative b over 2a, where b is negative 4 and a is 1. Okay, so that's going to be 4 divided by 2 is 2. And then y equals x squared minus 4x plus 5, and we're going to plug in 2 for x here and there, and then we're going to see that we've got 4 plus 5 is 9 minus 8, and that's going to equal 1. And so I can plot my vertex at 2 and 1. And then it's just going to be an upward-facing parabola from here, and this is going to be one of the types that does not have, um, you know, real zeros because the vertex happened above the x-axis, and it was a open, it opened up. Now we're graphing this thing on the interval 0 to 2 pi, which is a little bit bigger than 6. So this is going to continue to go up a little bit, you know, beyond there, but I'm not going to draw it all the way to the end because that would be kind of out of proportion. Okay, so what I'm saying is that on this interval, 0 to the vertex, okay, so r is decreasing on the interval 0 to 2, and then on the other half, uh, r is going to be increasing, and that's going to be from 2 to 2 pi. So I might just label it and say, okay, well, toward the origin is where r is positive and decreasing. And away from the origin is going to be where r is positive and increasing. And I think, yeah, this is all the examples I've got for you for this video. So thanks for watching.